I wrote a book uh, a few years ago with a chap who's in the audience over there in that direction um, called The Past is a Future Country, The Coming Conservative Demographic Revolution. And this and other things that I've written over the years got me particularly interested in the cycles of civilization, in why cycles of civilization happen. And somebody got in touch with me, who is a doctor in the United States, retired, uh, with an idea which I thought was really quite interesting, in which he said, well, yes, there are cycles of civilization among humans. There are these rises and falls. And even if the um, amount of uh, food that's available remains constant, even if there's no problems, you get exactly the same cycle among animals. So surely, if we want a theory that makes sense of ultimately the cycles of human civilization, then we need, for the purposes of consilience and of parsimony, if that theory applies to humans, the best theory will also apply to making sense of cycles in all other species, because then you're making sense of more with the smallest theory. And so that was his idea. And as you say, in all known species, you get this phenomenon where the, the population goes up, the population becomes large, and even if there's enough food, the population will eventually collapse. And this has been known about among, and then it will happen all over again. And this has been known about among biologists for over 100 years. And it just doesn't make uh, sense to them. And so he, he, his idea was, how can we make sense of it? Now, animals, one way of making sense of it is the idea that animals will mate assortatively. Uh, they will mate with others who are like them. And part of why they will do so is to maintain gene complexes to maintain epistatic effects. So let's say you are strongly adapted to the environment that you're in because of one particular effect. If you breed with someone who is too different from you, then that effect will break up in the offspring and the offspring will not be adapted to the environment and the offspring will die. You have to make sure that the effects are not broken up. And uh, studies found that, for example, among this plant here, the I don't know how you pronounce it, the sphere carpus. There are substantial differences in fertility and infertility based on the genetic relationship between different strains. So if they're breeding these plants with strains that are too similar to them, then it messes up and the fertility is too low. If they are breeding with plants that are too different from them, again, fertility is low. The optimum fertility, the high fertility, is among an optimum relationship between the strains. Uh, and similarly, there was a controlled study of Japanese quail, which found that Japanese quail are specifically attracted to other quail that are something like their second cousins. And when they are, then you have high fertility. And when it's closer related or more distantly related, fertility is lower. They are literally less able to impregnate. So this is a rather interesting idea, <coughs> which, um, which we wanted to pursue. Now, what we was shown in this research was that as a, basically, as a population becomes larger and as a population becomes denser, the individual organisms are less able to find those who are genetically similar to them. And so what they will do is breed, or optimally genetically similar, is breed with those who are very different or even just not breed at all because there's some sort of desire to breed only with those who are, it's almost like they're programmed to breed with optimum genetic similarity. And so this starts to explain perhaps these crashes that you see. And of course, those who breed in these circumstances, eventually, you, 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 among humans, it gets quite interesting. Because if we think about, I mean, I know there's someone in this room, one person I know of, that has quite a few children. But I suspect that a lot of you, well, a lot of you are quite young. So maybe you have children that you don't know about. I don't know, you've got some bird preggers, or I don't know. But, but in, in, in general, um, it's, it's small numbers of children. What we're seeing in, in civilization at the moment is that... Base science lovers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your ignorance and your inability to understand the nature of the world. And you have everything to gain. Join us on Substack for more based science now. Solidarity, brother.